In this video, I'll be showing you how to create a procedural weathered rock material with lots of detail and a way to colorize it as well. I'll be using Blender 4.2 with a Windows operating system, NVIDIA graphics card, rendering out on the Cycles render engine, and please check out the link in video for how I created the custom startup file. Just before I continue with the tutorial, let me remind you that you can grab this material and hundreds more on my Gumroad store, blenderbitesize.gumroad.com. Okay, let's make a start. I'm in the shading tab as ever. I have my object selected that I want to apply the new material to. I have the um, display render preview enabled. I'm using the cycles render engine and I've got my render settings here in case you need to take a note of those. So let's start by adding a new material. And if it doesn't appear here, just move your mouse in this area, press A on your keyboard and then the period button on your number pad and that should bring things into focus. Now we do have a lot to set up here. So what I'm gonna do is do quite a few shortcuts for this. So Shift A to find yourself a texture coordinate node and then drag out, actually no, let's just do things bit by bit. So we need a noise texture. A mix color node. A mapping node. And a wave texture. So those three, those three, those five, <laughs> can't even count. Now, before I um, do anything else, I'm also going to get a value node and pop it in just below the mix color node. Now, I'm going to select all of those and duplicate them two times. I also want a fourth copy of the texture coordinate. Now the reason for this is because if I try and use one texture coordinate node, it's going to get a bit messy with all the connectors. So just to keep things um, clean, I'm going to use uh, additional texture coordinates, but I'm going to be taking it all from the object output anyway. So it's going to be using the same information. Let's start with this top row. So we'll take the object output from the texture coordinate and put it into the vector input for the noise texture. We'll take the result or the uh, color from that and plug it into the A socket on the mix shader. We're going to take the object output from the texture coordinate below and put that into the B socket. And we'll put the, oh, I'll come back and change these values. We'll take the result from that plug it into the vector for the mapping node, and then take the vector from that into the vector for the wave texture. Now I'm going to add a color ramp on the end of this lot, and take the color value from the wave texture and plug it into the color ramp. And I'll just isolate this color ramp or this group of nodes by control shift and left clicking on the color ramp. So you can see what's happening as I change these values. So for the noise texture, we're going to keep those three as they are. Then the scale is going to be 20. Detail 20, although I think probably the maximum is 15 anyway. And the others I'm going to leave as they are. For the mix node or mix color node, I'm going to increase the factor to 0.7. And then this value node, I'm going to plug in to the scale on the mapping node. And I'm going to set this as 0.7. Now this basically helps me because if I don't have this, I have to manually change each one. Whereas if I use this, it will apply to all three XYZ values. Now for the wave texture, we're going to go for a scale of 1. Uh, distortion of 15. 
detail of 10, detail scale of 5, and the other two I will leave as they are. So you can now see quite a lot of detail going on in that. For the colour ramp, I'm going to set the interpolation mode to Ease. And I'm going to add a third little node, which I'm going to drag across. And you can see what that does. It kind of crunches down the contrast. So we've got mostly blacks and whites, but we've also got some greys. I'll come back and make some adjustments if I need to. OK, now for this second row here, again, I'm going to throw a colour ramp on the end. Then I'm going to take the object value from the texture coordinate, plug that into the noise texture. Take the colour from that, plug it into the A socket on the mix colour. And as I did before, I'm going to take the object output from the bottom texture coordinate, or the one below that, and plug that into the B socket. Take the result from that, plug that into the vector. Again, I'm going to take this value plug it into the scale, the vector from the mapping node into the wave texture, and the colour into the colour ramp, which I'll now isolate. Now for the colour ramp, again I'm going to add uh, a node here, change the interpolation to ease, and bring this across a bit. And I'm going to bring that black value in as well. I might need to change that, but I'll come back to that. For the noise texture, we're going 20, 20, and the rest is the same. For the mix factor, 0 0.6. For the scale value, 0 0.7. And then for the wave texture up here, I'm going bands diagonal with a wave profile of the triangle, scale of 1.5, distortion of 30, detail of 10, scale of 2, and the rest as they are. Now something I didn't show you earlier was, with this wave texture at the top, we're going for Z and Saw. So you can see that's more consistent with what I've been doing. Now then, back to this one. Now just before I move on to this last row, I'm going to add a bump node in here. And I'm going to take the factor from this wave texture and plug it into the height. And then as I move down, I'm going to take the factor from this bottom wave texture and plug that into the strength. So let me show you what that's doing. Take that out, plug that in, oops, factor. <coughs> now the distance is going to be 0.5 in here, but what I also need to do is make some connections and adjustments here, because all this is doing is being driven by this wave texture. So object output from the texture coordinate into the vector, Colour output from the noise texture into the A slot. And again, as we did before, object from the texture coordinate below into the B slot. Connecting this up with the mapping node and this up with the wave texture. So you can see that's now kind of sent it all higgledy-piggledy. And then for the scale here, 1.5. Now for the other values, for the noise texture, a scale of 10, detail of 15, roughness of 0.7. For the mix factor, 0.75. Oops, sorry if you got a loud noise there. And then for the wave texture, scale of 10, distortion of 15, detail of 10, scale of 5, and the rest as they were. So you can see that's now given lots of uh, 
detail to the bump node. So yes, as you can see, we've got a lot going on here already. Now, just before I start connecting things up, let's add another noise texture down here, just below the bump node. I'm going to take the factor from the wave texture and plug it into the vector slot there. I'm going to set the scale at around 32, detail of 5, roughness of 0.65, and leave the others as they are. Now we're going to take that out to a colour ramp. And what we'll do is leave everything else that is on that. Now I need to just move this principled shader out of it. Okay, now to mix these together, we're actually only mixing these two for the colour. So I'm going to need a mix colour node. In fact, I'm going to need two, so I'll just duplicate that one. And we're going to take the colour from here into the A slot and the colour from here into the B slot. We're going to change the... Oops, let's isolate that. We're going to change this blending mode to darken. And you can see what happened there. If I slide it all the way to 1 and back, you can see what's happening. I'm actually going to set that to 0.4. And then we need to plug this into the A slot on the next mix node. So let me isolate that so you can see what's going on there. And we're going to take the uh, colour output from this third colour ramp and plug that into the factor. Now, let me bring back the principal shader and plug this into the base colour. Now here, this value here is going to control the actual colour that gets applied to the rock. But as you can see, where it's sort of deeper or near the bump detail, it's going to be darker. Now, rock's not that colour, so let's drop that saturation and drop that hue. And now we need to apply that bump detail from the bump node as well. So I'm going to take a connector from there over to the normal input for the principled BSDF. And I'll just hold down my shift key, right click and drag through there to create a little node and bring that down so it's not so hidden. Now a couple of adjustments here I think. On this first colour ramp at the top we're going to change this black value. Let's say to 0.15 and then down here on the second one again we're going to increase that value to 0.15 and let's spread these out a bit Now, one change I didn't quite make, or didn't make at all, was on this third row, the bottom row, the wave texture, we're going to change the bands to diagonal, and the wave profile to... No, we'll save that as sign. Now, last but not least, for the rock, I'm going to increase the roughness to 
And actually, one more thing, I'm probably going to change this color here. I want a bit more saturation in the color. And I want to change it to sort of a rocky hue. Let me see what color I did these others with. So I'm just going to copy that color. So you can hover your mouse over a color and press Control C. Go back to your original material. And then Control V over that color slot. If I drop the saturation back a bit. I'm just making a few tiny adjustments here. You probably won't see much difference. Now, let's have a quick look at this bump detail. I think it's going in the wrong direction, so let's invert that. Okay, I think I'm done. Let's have a look and see what that renders out like. There you go, around eight seconds on those settings that I had before. What I will do here is throw in a few more settings for you with an example or two of a different setup so you get an idea of the size. But that's it for this one. Uh, I appreciate you being here. Thanks very much for watching. Of course, please remember to like and subscribe. And I will see you again next time.